This is my homemade jointer and it's ridiculously loud. Can you hear me talk? And part of the problem is it's powered by a universal motor from a 12 inch planer and that motor is just loud. So I'm gonna try switching it over to use this big induction motor instead, which is much quieter. So that's the induction motor. And then the universal motor. And I bought this much longer poly V-belt that fits on here and conveniently it kind of wedges onto the V-belt pulley that I've got on this motor already. Quite a difference! So it has a tendency to jump the pulley a bit here. Might have something to do with the long belt and the big pulley down there. Look at all that belt ripping off of it. I just moved that motor forward a bit. Let's see if it works better this time. Oh yeah, that's better. So even if I'm cutting fairly slow, you can see the tool marks on there. This is only a 1750 RPM motor, whereas this one is, I don't know, like 15,000 or something. So I'm getting a much lower speed. I think sometimes that belt just gets in there like this. And that causes all that jumping around. So uh, trying to make it work on this V-belt pulley is definitely a bad idea. But with this pulley and this pulley, I'm only getting a step up of 2 to 1, which means this is only running at about 3,500 RPM, whereas with this motor, it runs about 9,000 RPM. And I do think I have to run this much faster. So what I need is a much bigger pulley that is better for this type of belt to go on here, maybe twice that size. But those things are super expensive, and the only place I can find it is from McMaster Car, and those guys don't ship to individual people in Canada. So I'll try to make something out of wood to go on there. Now, how do I get this collet to slide off the shaft? I think it's painted on there. Just trying to loosen that collet by hammering it back. I just realized those screws are also useful for forcing the flange off a bit. So I just have to put them back in and then turn things a bit. I know I'm banging up the shaft here, but there's paint on it here anyways. It needs to be cleaned up. It's not very often I get to use my gear puller. Oh, there it comes. Yes! I need a less awful place to work on that motor. Now you Europeans are probably wondering, why do you need a 5 horsepower motor on that jointer? But it's not a 5 horsepower motor, it's actually only a 1 horsepower motor. Single phase. The center collet from this industrial pulley would be a cool center for a homemade wooden pulley and that way it could wedge that nicely onto that shaft. Let's just see if that idea works. That's nice and snug now. This is going to be a big pulley, but actually only twice the diameter of the old one, which should get me to about 7,000 RPM. This cutter naturally cuts slightly conical, so I'm actually pretty close already to the shape I need for this part. I made this flange to really help press that in there, or at least keep it pressed in so it doesn't come loose. Now to tighten this, I could just hammer this thing in there and have a spacer behind the pulley 
But then how do I get it off? I can hammer the pulley, but if this thing comes all the way back, I'm out of space. So I made this spacer here, which goes against the rotating part back here, and that will prevent this thing from sliding too far back, which means I'll always be able to hammer on the pulley to get it loose. This holds on pretty good by friction alone, but I don't want to risk it coming loose over time. Now I just got to turn this into some kind of a pulley shape. This is running entirely too fast for wood turning, but I don't have a choice about the speed. That looks like a nice pulley now. With that huge pulley, that belt is just way too short and I can't move the motor up far enough to compensate. So I ordered a new belt off of Amazon and it took much longer to arrive than they said it would. Two whole weeks. off the belt. I think I need to tip that motor this way a little bit. Squeak's gone! This bracket ensures that the board that the motor's on doesn't warp and keeps it properly aligned because this belt and pulley is very sensitive to misalignment. I got my bracket mounted so that motor is now rigidly in place and I got the uh, switch from the new motor too. Now I just need a belt guard. Got the new belt guard mounted in place and I just left the old motor in here in case I want it to be more portable again. It is quieter than it was before, but now the cutter head makes most of the noise. With the uh, cutter head now making most of the noise, the logical thing would be to switch to a carbide helical cutter head. But those are quite expensive, but a viewer, Jonathan Draney, has generously ordered one for me. But they have to make it first, so it's going to take a few months before that happens. Those carbide heads also take a lot more power, but with this big, big motor I've got down there now, I think I'll have lots of power. It's only a one horsepower motor. But I think that's a one horsepower before inflation, given the size of that motor. Certainly, it feels much more powerful than it was before. And of course, I'll make a video about it when I do swap out that cutter head.